great new phase in Mary, I mean, excuse me, in Sally's life started in 1994 when she met and befriended Mary Nesbitt, an orchid grower, and um, I have not met her, apparently a wonderful friend for you, right? <laughs> Mary is a wonderful friend and also probably one of the, the best orchid growers in the Bay Area. We're lucky to have her in Bolinas. Um, and I was particularly lucky after meeting her um, as she gave me access to some of the most incredible plants I've ever seen. I remember I was at one of Mary's sales um, and she walked out with this Lelia and she said, I want to show you something, Sally. And it was this mind-blowing plant. I mean, not only for the beautiful corsage-like orchids, but the whole structure of it with the pseudobulbs and the roots and these odd leaves. It was just a whole other world. And that happened at a time when I was in a little bit of a slump. So it just opened up a whole new um, area of inspiration to me. And I'm always grateful to Mary for, um, for doing that. I went on to uh, get involved with the San Francisco Orchid Society and did the posters for that big, beautiful orchid show at Fort Mason for um, 20 years, starting in 2016. And, and how did that change your, your sense of the graphic technique of leaving white and the dark? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> yes. And also it came out. In the that's country. true, that's true. Um, it was in, in doing one of my early posters for the orchid show that I started this tradition of having my flowers go out of the border. It was at that point just a graphic technique to kind of make a, make a happening poster. But I liked it so much that if you look around my, my exhibition, you'll see I'm using it in all, all, almost all of my paintings. It just became a, almost you know, my personal trademark in a certain way. But I really love how it gives the flowers a sense of life bursting out of their borders. And um, anyway, it's, it's been something I've done for a long time. This is an um, a orchid uh, from Mary. It's actually a species from Mexico, um, Lycasti skinneri alba. And one of the reasons I love this, uh, other than that it's an incredible plant, is that it's a white flower. The white flowers have always been one of my specialties. And I used to teach a whole workshop on the magic of white. And of course, white in watercolor is something to be cherished. You never use a white pigment, ever. That would kill your painting. Yeah. The white is the white of the paper, and that's to be embraced and, um, and revered and just um, shine through with all those transparencies. And there's a lot of, a lot of color in what subtle rainbow-like colors in the, in the whites, as you can see. There's all that, you just look and see that. And then the, um, the great example of watercolor imitating nature on its own in the background of this piece where it's wet into wet, as Barbara's been saying, and all this pigment coming together, and I, I honestly just let it happen. I didn't plan all these incredible things that um, imitate the moss environment that this orchid would have been growing in. Um, I just kind of orchestrated it a little bit. 